What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, we're gonna go over collection iteration in Apex. We're gonna figure out what a for loop is, what an enhanced for loop is, we'll figure out when to use them, why to use them, and most importantly, for both types of for loops, we're gonna do examples in Apex together. All right, everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series. Today, we are gonna take a look at collection iteration in Apex. Um, if you remember a while back, it's been quite a few episodes now, I think, a few anyway, we talked about collections and what they were, and we went over sets and lists and maps, um, which are your different collection types in Apex. And what we're gonna be talking about today is how to actually iterate over those collections. So say you want to you know, do an operation on everything in one of your lists or your sets or your maps, um, we're gonna find out today how you could potentially achieve that with what are called for loops, um, which are uh, you know, essentially a mechanism in Apex to allow you to iterate through those lists. So we're gonna build a few today, uh, well, a few, a couple today, and um, check out how they work. But before we find out how to do iterations over collections together, make sure if you actually enjoy this video to like it, because when you do, it helps this video get out to more people just like you that wanna learn this stuff for free. So you enjoy the video, like it. Now let's get back to those collections. Um, as far as why uh, collections are useful, and uh, essentially, you know, they're useful because more often than not, you're going to have a list of data to work with, some, some kind of collection of data to work with. And you're going to need to be able to, you know, go through each element in that list to make changes to the elements in that list when it's applicable, right, when, when you need to. Um, and for loops help to uh, get that done for you, right? Um, and uh, as far as when, we just d discussed it, right? You're gonna use these uh, collection iterators or for loops uh, when you need to iterate through collections to take a look at what's inside them, alter the contents of collections, whatever else. And you're gonna, you're gonna find that you do this uh, quite a bit more often than you know you might think at this moment in time if you've not done a lot of software development so this is kind of one of the uh, I would say fundamental things that you need to learn how to do and uh, we're gonna go over it together so the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, just create a brand new apex class and I'm gonna name it uh, collection iteration example like so, and we're gonna zoom in so you can actually see things and uh, <laughs> and all that. And we're going to uh, create a method and I'm gonna make it public static um, void. And we'll just call it um, collection fun, because why not, right? Why, why not? Um, and we'll pass it in a list of, um, I don't know, contacts. Why not? Like so. All right, um, and I just wanna state, you know, I make a lot of static methods in these uh, tutorials. Actually, I'm gonna make this one not static just so that <laughs> I don't do this too much. I, I really only do it so that it's easier for me to demo things in the anonymous Apex window. But uh, most of the time, you will find you're probably not going to be making static methods. Um, yeah. Anyway, now we've got this method. And this method is um, going to have a list of contacts passed into it as a parameter. And what we need to do, actually, I'm going to change the name of this method to be a little more meaningful for our brains while we <laughs> work through this. And we'll say update contacts, um, I don't know, last name or something. 
And so what we're going to do in this method is iterate over our list of contacts and update their last names uh, to whatever we want to update them to. So we've got two ways of doing this. Uh, we can use a, what's called an enhanced for loop, or we can use um, just a regular for loop. And I'm going to use the regular for loop first just to see how they, so, so I can show you how they work. Um, and then we're going to go over an enhanced for loop, which is what you will honestly use most of the time. Although it is important to know how the regular ones work as well. So to iterate through your collection, we're going to create a for loop, right? And for a simple or, you know, an, uh, a non enhanced for loop, uh, basically what you're going to do is declare an integer. You're gonna, so we'd say integer i equals zero. And then we'll say as long as i is less than the length, oops, uh, the, the length or the size of the contacts list. So this is going to give me the exact size of the uh, contacts list. Um, then we want to increase the value of i for each iteration through the loop. So I'm going to explain this a little as we go. We're going to put some debugs in so it's easier to understand. The first time I looked at this, I was really confused. Um, but it's really not that hard. Oh, we're going to figure it out together. So the next thing that we're going to do is say contacts i dot first name equals, I don't know. Oh, we're, we're updating last name. Last name equals uh, bamboozled. <laughs> sure. All right, so let's just take a closer look at this, and then we're going to put some debugs in and run this so that we can see how it works. All right, so we've got our list of contacts, which if you're not familiar with the list, just go back a few episodes and check out how lists work and all that kind of stuff. Go into great detail about it. Um, We've got our list of contacts, and we want to go through every uh, contact and update its last name to bamboozled for some reason. I mean, this is not a real scenario, but maybe you want to. And so we've declared a for loop, and essentially what's happening in this for loop here is we've got our integer i, which is going to basically count the amount of uh, times we've gone through or, you know, what it's essentially going to keep track of what record we're on in our list, more or less. We'll, we'll just put it that way. It's going to help us keep track of what record in our list we are currently on. And this statement here, i is less than contact.size, is going to make sure that we don't um, try to go past our list size, right? We That our for loop doesn't uh, iterate too many times, and we don't get, uh, we don't try to access an index in our list that doesn't exist, right? Um, because as we saw, I believe in the list episode, if you try to go, uh, if you, and even if we didn't, um, if you try to go past your, um, you know, the size of your list with this number i or <laughs> integer i here. Um, then you're going to get a uh, an error. It's going to tell you, uh, you, you essentially your list doesn't go to that index. We have a problem, right? So what this statement here is going to ensure that we do is not go past the size of our list, right? And then this last statement, I plus plus, means every single time we, you know, essentially execute this statement in here. We're going to increase the value of i by 1. So again, we can keep track of where we are in our list. right? And uh, what we're doing down here for this contacts bracket i dot last name equals bamboozled is we're saying in our list, we want to um, grab the, uh, the value that is at index i, whatever i is at that point in time, and um, take the uh, last name from the contact from that index in the list. And if um, 
the index in the list statement is confusing to you, please go back to the list video and check it out. And I go into a lot of detail there. Uh, I'll put it in the description of the video as well, so it's it's nice and easy to to check that out. Um, okay, so now that we kind of have an idea of what the for loop is doing, maybe I'm going to put in some debugs here, and uh, we'll just say uh, system debug maybe if I can spell no promises and we'll say this is the current value of I so that we can see how this whole I iteration works Whoa. and then we're gonna say you know at the end of this <clears throat> uh, down here actually system Dot debug. This is the list. Oops. And say contacts, like so. And we'll take a look at the last name for those contacts so we can see if they've changed or not changed by the time we're done with our collection iteration. I'll put one more up here list before iteration. So you can see the contacts uh, were different before we changed them. And now that we have this all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And the next thing we are going to do is bring up the good old Apex Anonymous window over here and write this code together, uh, or, <laughs> or actually execute our code, right, that we just wrote. So um, first things first, we need collection iteration example example equals new collection iteration example oops and then we'll say call example dot update contacts last name now uh, we also need to make some contacts right so let's go ahead and do that um, we'll create a list of contact contact contacts equals new list contact like so and then we will create a couple of new contacts and add them to the list and just give them both last names last name equals jambalaya and we'll do another one contact con two equals new contact and we'll give them a last name equal to Fumbalaya. Yeah. And then what we'll do is we'll add our contacts to our list. Contacts.add. Cont and contacts.add. Cont two. Like so. And then we'll pass our contacts in to our method. Okay, cool. So we've made two contacts. We've added the two contacts to our list that we made up here. Then we uh, instantiated a version of our class, and we're calling the method in the class that we just made together, right? And now we are going to take a look at the output. So let's run this. And it was successful. And we'll see this is the list before iteration. And the last names were Jambalaya and Fumbalaya. <laughs> and um, this is the current value of i, the first time you can see it was zero. The second time we went through the list, it was one. And after we went through the list, our contacts last names got updated to bamboozled because <laughs> we were all bamboozled. Um, and um, so cool, our for loop worked, right? Um, and that's great. And I just want you to kind of understand a little bit why this starts at zero and ends at one when our size of our list is two. Um, <laughs> I'm getting a little off topic here, but this is a little bit confusing to a lot of people, I think. Um, and I go over this a lot in the list video too, so I'm just gonna briefly go over it here. Lists start, this list, this contact list, starts at an index of zero. So you want your, your integer to start at zero here. 
And uh, however, when you say contacts.size, it's going to say that it's a size of two because there's two elements in it, right? We made two contacts. There's two elements in that list. But, um, you know, as far as the list is concerned, when you're accessing it this way, those two elements reside in spots zero and spots one. So you don't want to get to spot two because that would actually be element three and we don't have three elements. So the reason that you can use this contacts.size and it can be less than contacts.size is because contacts.size outputs two for good reason, but um, our elements reside at spots one, zero and one. And again, if you go back to the list episode, we go on that much more in detail. Um, but I'm not going to go over it too much more now. Just wanted to briefly explain that. All right, so we've seen how a simple or a, you know a, a non-enhanced for loop works. Let's take a look at an enhanced for loop real quick uh, to see how it operates and how it's a little uh, different, I guess. So we'll say uh, public void update contact last name enhanced and we'll also pass in pass in a list of contacts and <clears throat> we're going to create a for loop and it's going to look a little different this time we're going to say contact cont cons <laughs> and what we're going to do within the for loop looks different too we're just going to say cont last name equals uh jam boozled yeah okay so this looks different but i will say in uh most cases this is what you want to use uh, and it's a little easier to read uh, uh and just easier to use in general i think so basically what's happening now is we are declaring the type that uh, we can expect from our collection right so we have a list of contacts so we know that each element in our collection is of type contact so that's why we give it this type here of contact and we have um, the name that we'd like to name our variable so this is the type of our uh, the, uh, of the variable type that's within our collection and this is what we are naming the variable as we are going through our collection. So e each time we iterate through the collection, our variable is going to be named cont. And this is the list that we are iterating through, right? So <laughs> that's a little confusing, I guess. But it works just like this one up here, except that you don't have to go through the effort of, you know, creating a new integer figuring out what the maximum uh, you know, amount of times you want to go through the list, and you don't have to iterate that integer to ensure that you get the right value in your list. right? You don't have to do all of that in enhanced for loop. Instead, in the enhanced for loop, it does all of that for you. Um, and, but it's still doing the exact same thing. So what's happening here is it's essentially doing all that work for you and instead what you're doing is just declaring a variable to represent the current element in your list right and you are telling the enhance for loop which list you would like to iterate through and then um, down here we're just doing the same thing where we update the last name right so again difference here is you're declaring a variable to represent the current value in your list that you're iterating on and you're giving the enhanced for loop the list that you want to operate on and now if we save this and <clears throat> we uh, change this uh, method call down here to actually call the enhanced one instead and we output our <clears throat> list here we'll be able to see that our contacts were in fact updated just like before.
And I'm also just going to output system. Oops. This is the current contact, like so. And we're just going to run this real quick and see what we get. And it was successful. And you can see this is the list before iteration, jambalaya and fumbalaya. And then we have, uh, you know, the first time we go through the list, last name jambalaya, second time fumbalaya. And then by the time we're done iterating through, um, we've got two contacts with the last name of Jamboozled. <laughs> um, and that, guys, is pretty much how you iterate through uh, your collections in Apex. Uh, not too challenging, but a little confusing up front to try to figure out, you know, how that works and what you're expecting from it and all that kind of stuff. Um, hopefully, this has helped uh, quite a bit. We're going to go over uh, collections much more throughout this tutorial series. So if you're a little confused, don't worry about it. We'll go over it again and again because we'll use it over and over and over, and you'll get more and more comfortable with it. Um, all right, I think that's it for this episode. I appreciate you sticking with me, and uh, I hope it's helped, and I also hope I'll see you in the next one.